Welcome to the sun drenched tropical paradise of Isle Delfino. We're so pleased to welcome you to our beautiful home. Come enjoy a natural wonderland to which we've added the world's finest resort facilities, a spectacular amusement park, and succulent seafood. Oh. All this and more await you on Isle Delfino. Come relax and let us refresh your body and spirit. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and I'm proud to welcome you to a moment two and a half years in the making I have been preparing, well not preparing, but hoping and wanting to do this Let's Play. It's the one I've been looking forward to doing for ages, I'll talk about it more when we get onto the kind of actually playing the game, but for now, gonna be a bit more opening and cutscenes, so sit back, get comfy, pour yourself a drink, and enjoy the show. Concerned with the well being of the princess in this dreadful heat. Master Mario, if you would, cross over to that shore and find some assistance. <laughs> so Mario, be careful. I have a bad feeling about this. And just like that, we're actually in the game. In terms of like controls, it's literally just running around with the control stick A to jump, B to kind of dive, and that's about it. C stick moves the camera. I think it's L in midair. Yep, does a ground pound. And that's the kind of basic controls for now. Yeah, well, literally, I have very few problems with this game, but one of my only ones is how the opening of it is very cutscene heavy. When I said pour yourself a drink, I was not kidding, even remotely. Seriously, make yourself comfy. Power up complete. Thank you for purchasing this item from Gab Science Incorporated. Preparing to register customer information. Scanning and classifying subject data. Subject identified as Mario, resident of the Mushroom Kingdom. Data storage complete. I am Flood, a flash liquidizer ultra dousing device. I hope to be of assistance. Proceeding with user instruction. Use the R button to shoot water from my tail. If you press the R button all the way down, you can stop and shoot. You can then use the control stick to aim in any direction. Press the X button to switch to the hover nozzle. You can then press the R button to hover in the air for a short time. If this tank is empty, no water can be sprayed. To refill tank, enter a body of water and press the R button. Instructions complete. Proceed. Certainly not. This guy's almost as bad as Kepora Gebora. And now we're actually in control. Fortunately, at least that did give a brief kind of like 
explanation of the controls of Flood, so I don't kind of have to do it. The thing he didn't mention is basically, if you press the Y button, it brings the camera in close like that, and you can kind of aim around in first person mode is not quite the right thing. Sniper mode kind of stuff. But yeah, there's this paint like goop all the place, all around the place, and you can squirt that off, because as you can see, one of the main parts of this game is Flood, the flash liquidizer ultra dowsing device. Anyway, there's like a Pianta here, one of the kind of residents of the island that's underwater, well underwater, under paint, and so you can wash him off, and then he's all happy. You can talk to him with B, theoretically. There we go. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Whoa. I thought I really thought I was a goner. Hey, hang on. It's you. This whole mess is your fault. What an odd thing to say. And very rude as well. Anyway, there's this goop in the middle which kind of flashes when we spray it. So if you give it a proper spray... And we come across our first enemy of the game, the polluted piranha plant. Basically, when its gobs open, you need to just spray it in the mouth. This one, fortunately, because we're right in the tutorial part of the level, always has its gob open. Three hits. Also, I think I'd like to take this opportunity to point out this runway is impossibly small. Even without that goop in the way, there is no way a plane could, plane could land on that. Runway is like three kilometers long. Anyway, look at this. What might this be? Well, you'll see them all over the visualizer at the moment. But still, let's grab it. Shine! I don't know why I need, felt the need to read that out, but I did. Let's continue. Court is now in session. As you are no doubt aware, someone has been senselessly defacing Fair Isle Delfino using some paint-like substance. The accused is charged with polluting our beautiful home, and yes, endangering our very way of life. Indeed, how can one not be aware of what is going on? Though it is daytime in Delfino Plaza, our poor residents tremble beneath a veil of darkness. Expert shine scholars have determined that this darkness has arisen because all of our guardians, the shine sprites, have vanished from their gathering spot at the shine gate. The reason? It's quite obvious. This horrible graffiti is to blame. Behold this sketch of the perpetrator based on eyewitness descriptions. The truth is obvious. The guilty party sits among us. It is none other than Mario! Objection! Overruled! I judge the defendant guilty as charged. I hereby order the defendant to clean this entire island. Until Isle Delfino is completely free of his vile handiwork, Mario shall not be allowed to leave. Court adjourned! This appears to be quite a predicament, Mario. Data analysis verifies that the island's inhabitants are indeed troubled by pollution, but the pollution itself is not the main problem. Mario, you witnessed this object at the airstrip, correct? It is a shine sprite. Shine sprites are the source of power on Isle Delfino. They used to gather in great numbers at the shine gate, but the Graviti incident has polluted the island and most of the Shine Sprites have fled. There is no longer any power to support the peaceful lifestyle of the islanders. It is most pitiable. The only way to ensure the return of the Shine Sprites is to keep the island from becoming any dirtier. The perpetrator is likely at work even as we speak. And you, Mario, are being treated as a criminal. Tomorrow we must do our best to resolve this situation. Go straight that way. You can't miss the mess, pal. Your first job's to get rid of all that ugliness. And remember, we'll be watching you, pal. We'll know if you start slacking off. 
and we're back in control in the main kind of hub region of the game, Delfino Plaza. One of the really odd things about this game, yeah, is the fact that there's, in the entire game, I think, there's something like 15, maybe 20 minutes of cutscenes. Most of them are right at the beginning. Basically, there's a lot of exposition and setting the plot up, and then beyond that, there isn't really much. You just play through the game, and then you get towards the end game, and then suddenly you start getting cutscenes again, but they are rare. But anyway, if we come through to kind of like, you'll get used to the layout of Delfino Plaza and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, if we come through here, here's where the main muck is. Let's save that Pianta there. If we wash him, let's see what he kind of says. Yeah, one of the odd things is that they basically, the justice system on Isle Delfino is clearly extremely kind of skewed because, wow, first things first. Anyone recognize what this is from like five minutes ago? I know that was a long cutscene and you might have had your mind wiped during that time, because let's be face that wasn't a particularly interesting cutscene. But there's another polluted prana plant, but this one doesn't always have its gob open and I think takes five hits. But anyway, yeah, like no one realizes, or like none of the judiciary realized that Mario was already here when it was already the island was already dirty by the time we arrived, and yeah, they just kind of overruled Peach. But anyway. Well, there's your perpetrator, all right. He very much looks like the eyewitness sketch we were given. Um, yeah, he's clearly been impersonating us and doing nastiness around the garden. So what we need to do now is chase him. Fortunately, our main weapon is water in this game. And fortunately, every enemy in this game is vulnerable to water. Spray him a little bit and he falls down. Ow, ow, ow! Not fair! Completely unfair! You shouldn't be allowed to use tools like that! And he, like, teleports like a foot. He's heading for the square! Go get him! Okay. Oh god. The Oh, that's weird. The oh, We can't spray him at this point, we've just got to chase after him. Um, yeah, the C-stick's kind of inverted. Pressing left spins the camera right and the other way around. But anyway, I think we've actually got to the square before him. Oh no, there he is. Hello. He kind of- he's nice. He kind of waits for you, which is unusually helpful for an antagonist. And like everything else in this game, he escapes into the graffiti barrier. Try spraying it with water. Fortunately, water does everything in this game. Let's a go! And now we see how the main kind of mechanics of this game works. There is. I'll like so Delfino Plaza is the main kind of hub of the world, but then there are seven peripheral worlds, kind of like levels attached to it, of which the first is Bianco Hills. Each world consists of what, seven ep eight episodes, in which each of which you get a shine sprite. There are some secret ones as well, but anyway, all we can do for now is Bianco Hills, episode one, Road to the Big Windmill. And every episode will start with a kind of flying camera showing you vaguely what the thing of interest in that level is. So, this is Bianco Hills. Like pretty much everywhere, I would say, in this game has some immensely catchy music. One of my favourite things about this game is the music in it. It just kind of adds to... This game has a really kind of like bright, fun feel to it generally, and the music just kind of really reinforces that. Anyway, weirdly enough, we saw Shadow Mario in the kind of like opening shot, but he's not actually there. But guess what it is? It's another polluted piranha plant. They're pretty much the only enemy we've faced so far. They throw you a ton of these in the early game, and then you get to a certain point and you just never s Oh, dear me. Never see him again. Yeah, if you hit the- Oh. Okay, so you have health. It appears in the top right there. You have 10 units of it. Um, yeah, this goop is, can make you really slippery and slidey. Doesn't actually deal you any damage. Makes you slide around. Anyway. Oh, surprise, surprise. It's- Oh, little- Gloopy thing jumped at me. I can't remember what they're called. I should know that. But yeah, another polluted piranha plant. These brown kind of like chocolatey looking paint ones only take three hits, but keep their gob closed on like the kind of pinky yellowy one. Anyway, three shots and it's down. This is getting slightly, well not repetitive, but we've certainly, it's certainly formulaic, let's say. And not only does that make an entire ramp appear, but also a shine sprite. Which is awesome. We can, if you look very carefully, we'll have seen something at the top of the windmill there. But if you didn't look carefully, I'm not going to show you what it is, because we'll probably see you very soon. Anyway, that's the science shine sprite. That is the second for our collection. Go us. 
So, you are now returned to Delfino Plaza. You can explore around Delfino Plaza, but there's actually not a great deal we can do at the moment. Um, because the only world we really have access to is Bianco Hills. What we can do, though, however, is... Here's something interesting. Wash this off. And it makes a blue coin appear out of another one. That other one is... If we just come over here... Wow, okay, I'm doing a bit of a trick there. I'll talk somewhat more about that later. But that blue coin appears here. And that is our first blue coin. Every 20 blue coins you get, you can later in the game trade in for a shine sprite. And so they're the kind of other main thing we'll be gathering, which you can see on the visualizer. And yeah, like when there's bits with those two X's, each one will cause an X to pop out of the other one. What I'm also doing there is a bit of a... Okay, glitch isn't quite the right word, but basically... So if you press B... Oh, I didn't mean to save there. That's going to take a while. There we go. I didn't, if you press B, you'll kind of dive. And it's one of ways of moving quickly. You kind of press B, A, B, A, B, A... But a nice little trick, slightly glitchy, but it's basically you slide on water really fast, squirt some water down and belly slide onto it, and you'll get your own little kind of trail of water that can move you around really quickly. It's an immensely useful tactic for the kind of faster parts of this game. Anyway, oh, didn't mean to jump on a toad there, actually meant to go into here, back into Bianco Hills. And episode two, down with P.T. Piranha. You might recognize that name if you've played Mario Kart, Double Dash, and various other Nintendo games, because this was actually a significant episode, because this introduces what became, slightly later on, not a major Nintendo character, but one that's often featuring in kind of, like, side games and stuff like that. He was in Double Dash. I don't think he's been in any Mario Kart games since, um, which was a shame. There were two characters from this game that appeared in Double Dash, but they didn't make it into later Mario Kart games. They're actually... Uh, it's one of the things that annoys me with Mario Kart. They had a load of interesting ideas, and now they've kind of lost it a bit, because, like... They definitely need more lightweight ideas. This is the point I'm always making because... Or, I think ever. Oh, that's a piranha plant. Fill them with water and they burst. Coins also heal you, by the way. And I think they might give you some water back. I don't think they do, though, yet, because your water's in the bottom right. Um, but no, in terms of Mario Kart, yeah. Almost every single lightweight is just some form of baby. So it's like, baby Mario, baby Luigi, baby Peach, baby Daisy, baby War... Okay, baby Wario's not in it. He was only on Yoshi's Island. But there is baby... Rosalina, I think is it as well. It's like five of your characters are just baby protagonists. It's a bit of a kind of thing. Anyway, we've come a bit further along than when we ended the last episode up. Oh, uh, but it's pretty much the same kind of thing of these piranha things rolling at you. Like if you wash off these paintballs, they aren't actually paint, they're piranha heads, which is actually kind of dark when you think about it. L centers the camera behind you. I just remembered that and that I hadn't mentioned that particularly. You don't have to clean any of this paint off really, but it just makes it a bit easier. These little fountains, when you touch them, will fully kind of like replenish your water somehow. And you just use a hover nozzle a bit around here. I genuinely think Flood is probably one of the most interesting and innovative concepts Nintendo ever came up with. Like the Mario Galaxy kind of concept is vaguely interesting, but Flood was just so unique at the time. Still is now, it's awesome. Another blue coin there. And if we hop onto one of these things, I don't know, what do you call these? It's kind of, well, these are the, clearly the sails of the windmill, but I don't know why they have platforms on them. Or even how this platform is staying upright. Surely it should kind of spin around and by the time we got to the top we'd be upside down. It's kind of gyroscopically stabilized. Pretty clever. Uh, not sure why you bother building it into a windmill because you're not really supposed to ride the sails. But anyway, we're now at the top of the windmill and here is P.T. Piranha. And the episode was called Down with P.T. Piranha. So let's take him down, I guess. Good one. And now we begin what is technically our first boss battle. So there's these little paint bastards that stop spawn occasionally, but if you clean up the basically if you clean up all the paint, they will stop spawning, but it's not really necessary. A little trick you can do there, yeah, is if you spin the controller, like the control stick, oh he's spewed all over there. Um yeah, if you spin the control stick and then press R, you'll do a kind of whirly gig spray, which is quite useful. As for fighting him, wait till his gobs open like that and fill it with water. It seems like every enemy at the moment is being fought by filling its gob with water. That becomes less true later in the game. But then what you need to do is... There's a big arrow pointing at it so you can't miss it. There is his tummy button. Use L to do a ground pound on oh, no, it. I couldn't think what the word was. Um, and then it's a kind of bit of a rinse and repeat. He doesn't have really that many attacks. He'll just kind of wobble his arms around and look ridiculous. And then eventually... Come on, man. Open his gob again. And then we fill it with water again. 
And you can kind of see how this goes. <laughs> uh, this game does amuse me so much. Like, one of the things I just like about this is it's got a really good kind of, yeah, sense of fun, which I think was kind of slightly missing in later Mario games. It's also got, this is one of the things I will always love the GameCube for, it's got free camera control on the C-Stick. Uh, and that's not really been an option for ages. It was an option for the Wii because of, like, no buttons on the Wii, basically. And the Wii U hasn't really had 3D platformers. Hasn't had many games, actually. But anyway, three hits, and he cal not calcifies, paintifies, and then kind of dissolves. Which is pretty brutal when you think about it. Anyway, well, regardless of how brutal it was, here's the Shine Sprite. That has technically been 20 minutes, but this episode's gonna be more like 25 to take account for the fact that, like, the first, like, quarter of, or half even, actually, of this episode was cutscenes. But you see what I mean? You don't get many cutscenes later on in the game. But anyway, as you return to Delfino Plaza, you see an event happening, which is something over there. These happen, there are certain triggers for it, and this first one here is when you've got three Shine Sprites, this first event triggers. You can return into Bianco Hills at this point and continue on with the levels there. Nothing is stopping you doing that, except that there's interesting stuff over here. And I'd rather kind of mix it up a bit. I'm still not entirely sure how you're supposed to play this game. I'll explain what I mean in a second. But anyway, this is an interesting one because this is this kind of thick, black, oily paint that we've not come across before. It's, of course, a Pluto Piranha Plant. And you fight it in much the same way that you always fight Pluto Piranha Plants. Except for, I believe, this one kind of takes five hits. And uh, let's wallop it again. But no, like, I'm, basically, you can continue playing Bianco Hills there, or you can kind of move on and do other stuff here. It takes three, and you think it's defeated. But then... Oh, it's back! How exciting. But yeah, I'm still not sure whether you're supposed to play one level through all the way to the end, and then kind of move on to the next level, or something like that. Oh, damn, his gob wasn't quite open yet. And I never yet... Oh, it's six shots by the looks of it, actually. It's two lots of three. How unusual. Anyway, once you defeat him... This beach hut appears. Now, if you enter the beach hut, like through this kind of side door, oh, we're covered in shit. Hey, hey, and we're not anymore. Hey, I love that little trick. If you enter there, that's where you can trade blue coins, 20, I believe, for a shine. But on the side of the hut here is one of these M tags again. Spray it with water and hop in. And this brings us to the second level, Rico Harbor. Episode one, Koopa Blooper breaks out. And with the opening flyby, we see... Oh, actually, we don't. We see there's a lot of oil coming out of those boxes. Kind of oil. I suppose it's still all technically paint, but looks like oil to me. But yeah, so technically you could complete all the Bianco Hills levels, but like... It's weird for, partly to unlock a level and then just not play it, I think. So I think whenever we unlock a new level, we're going to kind of play through it. Um, but also, yeah, I kind of like to mix and match. I don't want to do like two episodes of Bianco Hills and complete that, then like the next three or four in Rico Harbor and kind of go on like that. I'm going to mix it around and kind of... I think I've got a plan for doing this, and I don't believe we ever do two... Sh Apart from what we just did, I don't think we ever do two shines in the same level in a row again. Um, so that's kind of cool. There's a... Right, Rico Harbor, I think... Oh, is a really cool level, and there's a lot of... Okay, we'll take that coin as well. Didn't mean to get that blue coin. There's a lot of scaffolding and stuff, and it's a really interesting kind of platform level. Each level definitely feels really different, because in terms of, like... The content, the structure of this level, it feels very different to Bianco Hills. And each one of the seven levels has got that kind of its own kind of thing. With these platforms, like platforms, like grill mesh work things, looks like chicken wire, you can kind of, you can crawl around them with the control stick. If you ground pound on these panels, you go through them and you can kind of crawl around on the walls and then you can press A to kind of punch that through there. And that's, yeah, that's like, that's, we'll need more of that later on in Rico Harbor. But for now, what I'm trying to do is get on top. Nope. Not on top of the pianta. Um, I want to get on top of this ship because we need to get over to those crates that showed in the kind of opening. And the easiest way up there is... Oh, for God's sake, why do I keep getting... There we go. What I'm doing there is if you kind of start running one direction and quickly press the control stick in the other direction and press A, you kind of do a flip thing. What I was trying to do is get onto this kind of... Oh, area there. I thought I had missed it there. Oh, let's grab another blue coin. Why not? All of the blue coins. Yeah, what I was saying there is if you kind of, so say I kind of start running left here, then press right and A, kind of so left, right A, you kind of do that little flip there. These kind of, oh, go away bloopers. These kind of like M tags, whenever you spray them, they'll wash off and release a blue coin. I think or pretty much it's a hard general rule that every M tag in the game will release a blue coin. Anyway, oh, uh, there we go. There's this weird appendage hanging out there. So we'll do what any sane normal person would do, which is grab onto it with B and pull back on it.
enter our second boss of the game, Koopa Blooper, who has just broken out as the level is <laughs> called. Anyway, so he'll try and slam you down on you. Ow. What you can do is jump on his tentacles and pull them back uh, again using B. And if you pull them back far enough, they'll snap off. You can also, like, so if you spray his face, not only to get the oil off his face, but it kind of angers him a bit. Oh, no, did not mean to dive there. Just anger him a bit more and he'll attack you. Yeah, ground pound his tentacles and it'll flatten them and give you a chance to pull them. It doesn't matter about his two kind of side tentacles, but his two kind of feeding tentacles. Wow, well, uh, no, actually they would be tentacles because uh, they've got a club on the end of them. Once his eyes go pink, let go of his cork and it'll fly back and slam him in the face, as you just saw. And that'll pull his cork out, but he'll kind of continue and spray some paint around. But basically, the second phase of this path battle happens in very much the same manner as the first one. Now, I can't tell if he's supposed to be an octopus or a squid, because squid are defined by having eight arms and two long feeding tentacles. The ones around the back of him are clearly arms, but these ones are kind of tentacles. It's about whether it ends in a kind of club or not is the definition for whether it's a tentacle or an arm. Um, but anyway, I'm getting onto kind of my specialist subject. But anyway, oh, let's grab that one again. Again, the two side ones don't matter. He just, he only, he'll only hit you with those ones if you spray him in the face. If you were to pull him back here and you hadn't taken off those two tentacles, he'd whack you. But keep pulling him and then... Sploosh! Shout out to Salvatore. And that, of course, releases a Shine Sprite, which we can grab! And give us the fourth one for our collection. There are, I believe, look on the right of the visualizer, but I think it's either 120 or 121. I can never remember. Um, but that's been, what, 27 minutes? So we will call it a day for now, I believe. So, because I don't want to do the next level that I'm going to do, because that's an annoying one. And I'll start another episode with it. Um... But yeah, thank you very much for watching this first episode of Super Mario Sunshine. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you like this game, I hope you'll watch some more of it. If you've not even come across this game before, I'm amazed, but also... I don't care if you never come across this game and I'm the one to introduce it to, that's brilliant. So thank you very much for watching. I've been the Doctor of the Infamous Gentleman and this has been Super Mario Sunshine. I hope you'll join me next time and good day.